Greetings and welcome back to the world of Tailspire. My name is Aaron from Nordic Forge Games and today we're going to be building a Viking longhouse. But before we get started, I'm going to head to tailstavern.com and actually grab the code for my Viking longhouse. So if you type in longhouse into tailstavern.com, there are going to be some things that come up. And looky here, the Nordic Forge Games Fantasy Longhouse 1. And what we're going to be doing today is creating Fantasy Longhouse 2. So on Tales Tavern, when you find a slab that you like or you need, you can just click copy code right here at the top, copies it to your clipboard, and then back inside your game, you can just control V to paste, and bingo, we've got our Fantasy Longhouse right here on the board. This is one of my very first creations with Tailspire. I was really proud of it. Still, I'm really proud of it. My plan was to eventually create like a whole Viking village. And to do that, I want to make sure I have multiple buildings that I can populate my village with or that you guys can use as well. So I figured since I'm using Tailspire today, I might as well turn on the camera, show you guys what I'm working on. And now we can start moving from the nature sort of guides and tutorials and the way that I handle the natural environment into urban or structures or buildings. And we can start getting more and more advanced with these videos and doing some really fun stuff. So I encourage you guys to build along with me. I am still a little bit sick, so you guys may hear my nose is stopped up or I'm hoarse, but we're just going to keep going, have some fun today. And I did want to say a big thank you again, everyone that interacted with the last video. Tons of comments, tons of stuff that you guys were interested in. I'm trying to make sure I respond to everybody, but if I haven't got to you yet, just hang in there. I'm sure I'll get back with you soon. All right, so let's get it started. No more messing around. So this, again, uh, is the Fantasy Longhouse 1. Uh, I based it on a traditional Viking longhouse using reference photos and then added some flair and fantasy elements to make it fit into my setting. So the goals with today's video is I want to build everything on camera, just like the last video where you guys actually saw me from top to bottom construct that cliff face. And then I'm just going to provide advice and tips you know, where applicable. We're going to use reference photos today. I'm going to show you the reference photos I found. And then at the end, I'll show you how we're going to store it and share it for other people to download. So I'm going to build on the same board as this slab, just so that I can look over here and reference this longhouse. Make sure they look like they're in the same location. They get the same style. And also we can harvest assets over here that we may need, like these little roof cross beams or anything really. And I want to make sure I'm building it roughly the same footprint size that this house is sitting on. And it looks like we have a two by three. And then to get some base terrain down, I'm going to lay down a 24 by 16 layer of our grass tiles. All right, so we're ready to jump in. But before that, I want to make sure that I show you guys what I'm referencing. So what I did is I just went on Google Images, searched Viking Longhouse layouts or designs or whatever, and tried to find something that I liked the shape of and the look of. I also wanted to make sure it was a lot different from the first longhouse I created, where the main entrance was on the long side of the house. And this entrance is on the short side of the house. And remember, we're not going to be creating a one-for-one -one replica of this. This is just going to give us some inspiration, perhaps for the roof shape. I really like this little side piece here that almost looks like a shed. We can recreate a lot of this very easily in Tailspire. And then I also found an interior shot, which looks like it's from a textbook, maybe, about how the inside of longhouses were built. This one also has the main entrance on the short side. And then we have animal pins. We actually have one outside, and we have one inside that actually holds horses and cows and things. We've got beds along this wall, fire pit in the center, some tables and chairs and chests and all kinds of cool stuff. And it's nice to know how things were laid out historically so that we can embellish them and change them up later. So this is our exterior sort of inspiration and our interior inspiration. And at the end, it's always kind of fun to compare your original reference photo that you were using with what you ended up creating because it may be completely different. Okay, so the main set of tiles I've been using when I build currently is rural because it's just got a little bit of a darker color scheme and we also get these thatched roof pieces, which are really awesome for Nordic sort of Viking villages. And I don't have like a set in stone process for buildings or architecture. I just try to build from the ground up. And as I see things, I try to address them. I find starting with a corner piece is usually where I like to begin. So I'll just grab one of these basic corner pieces with the floor attached and I'll start looking at how wide I want my building to be. Now in our reference photo, the tavern opens up a little bit more and gets wider about halfway down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start three wide. So one, two, three, and then the door can be in the middle there. And this is going to be the big central section of the house here. 
And what I'm building too, I try not to worry too much about making things exactly even. Okay, so now I want to start taking window pieces. So any sections I know I want windows in. And we've got windows on each side there. And I think I want to uh I think I want to do the same thing with windows here. This wall, I think this can be straight across. Throw them down here. I do try to vary the wall pieces I use just to break up some patterning on the inside and the outside. I kind of want to open it up a little more, so I'm going to scoot this back. Yeah, there we go. I like that size better overall. In the picture, the roof comes all the way down to the ground. I'm going to leave this open for now. So I'm going to throw in a floor piece here. This piece is great too, this little half piece. So I'm just going to drop some stones in, stair pieces, handrails. At this long house, I use two double doors, and I think I'm going to do the same thing here. I think these look very appropriate. Now, the other question is, do I want to put another door on the far side? Let me just see how it looks. Clip some stones here, and then we just do some basic steps coming out, and then maybe we could replace this with a road dial. That actually kind of looks cool. Um, I like how it's the road is set down a little bit, and it's not the main entrance. But we can still decorate even these these tiles to make sure that it looks cool. Let's finish up the floor. I try to put the uh, 4x4 tile in where I can, like these sections here. One reason is it's nice. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't have a, a very noticeable repeating pattern. Vary the floor tiles. And then for the remainder, I'll use the single tile. And I'll just try to rotate it every time I place it. In the tavern section, there is this pillar that I like to use. It, it's a different color. So one, it, it adds some variety of color. And two, it's a perfect spot to close in this little gap that we see on the corners. I'm liking it a lot. Now I do want to texture around our porch. I'm using this block here from the ruined castle tiles and I just sink it down to about a, uh, to a half a step and I put it inside the wood just again to break up the monotony of the same textures over and over again. This back section was uh, made up for animals, right? So maybe we need to play that a little bit more. I'm going to take these out real quick. So, and because the floors are linked to the walls, unfortunately I have to kind of redo this section, which is fine by me because one, it's going to add even more interest and variety to the inside and we can have like a little fence here. Just an idea while we're building. What if it actually went down, like stepped down into the animal area? It also adds a, a level. It breaks up this flat area, so it goes down. I just don't know if I want there to be grass there or something else. All right, the winner for now is going to be this uh, cobblestone. Uh, that's what I like about Tailspire is nothing is permanent. We can go in and change this later if we feel like it. So again, we've still got a lot of work to do, but to start with roofing, I like to start with these face pieces. Um, this helps me again start with the corners, just like I did before. We need to think about a chimney or in our reference photo, there's just an opening in the center for a fire pit in the middle. From our interior reference photo, it would be somewhere around here. So next we're going to move on to these uh, two by one roof pieces. So for instance, right here, and we spin around and do it on the same side. And we're going to do the same here. We're going to try to match up, make sure we're at the same height as our face piece. And then we're going to come across. So what we want to do now is we want to use the little one by one thatch roof tile because That'll allow us to come up to a nice even point and not extend past each other. And then we can worry about this opening later. So roofing can take a long while as well. Um, you kind of have to have patience and take your time. Looks pretty cool. So now I've got to start thinking about how little side roof piece is going to come down. I love how this looks from the outside. <laughs> from the inside, it's just going to give us a little alcove. It's not going to give us a lot of extra room. We can actually start uh, peeling back our roof to look inside now too. See, watch. So on my blacksmith uh, shop and house, I use these stones at the top with like a, a gateway, like uh, one of these. And I, I really enjoyed how that looked. And I wanted this longhouse to mimic that. One of the things I do like to do with roofs is extend them one place further. 
once I figured out what the uh, face is going to look like, is we extend our roof down even further and gives it more of a, an actual eave look to the house instead of the roof being exactly even with the side of the house. Change my atmosphere a little bit so that I have a bright side and a shadow side. This is starting to look cool, man. Okay, so I've got to figure out how this is going to work here. If I use this piece on each side, that closes in this section really nice. Uh, okay, so that needs to come out here to look a little more natural. So this looks pretty nice, you know, whenever uh, we have the roof off. Now, if I tear the roof off again, the fire pit is here. And there's a section of our roof that needs to go even higher. And I'm trying to see about which pieces I need to take off. I haven't done this before, so I'm just going to experiment a little bit. I think that is going to be better. Now I just need to figure out how to connect this in a way that makes sense. So we have some pillars that we can use. There's some clipping here that looks a little funny. That looks good. I could use this chance to add a little more stonework. Ooh, I could do this again. That may be overkill, though. Maybe not. Maybe look freaking sweet, dude. I think under decorations and miscellaneous interior. Yeah, we have this beam here. And I'm going to clip it through. Hey, I think that works pretty well. Creating more of that stonework again. And is there anywhere I can place this where it feels appropriate? Maybe there. We have more stones here that we can clip and make interesting shapes with. I want to think about where we could put some of these thatched windows. I'm thinking maybe here. Yeah, I'm cool with that there. I like that. Put one on this opposite side as well. Now putting uh, windows here, I think, would probably be a little bit too much. We need some sort of pattern or moss or uh, texture here because there's so much of one color. This roof will be really easy to access on foot. You could climb up it. Uh, one little thing when I'm putting in windows is I go to lighting, I grab this candle, I just spin it around, and I try to clip it right into the window. You can see there's like a glow to that window now. Make sure you don't push it through completely to the other side. We could throw some of these torches outside, because I believe this is the same torch we used on our other house. Yeah, these would look great. All right, since we're adding light sources, let's, let's just play around with uh, the idea of light coming out from up here. If we use this candle and we push it into these rocks here and then lift it up, that actually looks pretty cool. Let's actually see how it looks real quick at nighttime. See, we get a, uh, along with the regular torch light, we get some subtle ambient light from these windows. And that just gives it the sense that there are people, there's life inside. So our roof is looking pretty dope indeed. Let's do a little bit more. So this is like a little basic idea I came up with to add texture to roofs. I use stairs and then I use cross beams uh, from the furniture section that are like handrails. And then I use a shelf. I'm going to just try to grab this stuff. So what I'll do is I'm just going to delete these pieces. And then I'm left behind with the little end cap thing I've created. And we're just going to select it, cut it. Now the goal with these is to put it just high enough that it clips through uh, and doesn't get lost or sunk inside the roof. And this is, goes back to uh, creating assets, right, that you can use uh, multiple times, your own custom assets. This is one that I actually have on my main board that I use quite a bit. Since I've created it already, we can just reuse it when we need it. So now I want to just take some basic stairs and fill out the rest of the roof with some texture. All right, and then what I like to do above windows is the same thing. I like to come up to a point, like almost showing the scaffolding or the the interior construction. Now, the other thing about doing this is really cool is you can just remove sections of the roof now, and it looks like there are skylights or vents. And so since this area inside the house is the like uh, livestock enclosure. Maybe they're they're trying to build the roof in a way that would assist in like letting out the smell of the animals or something.
these you know, micro changes in texture do help the eye not just look at one solid piece and be like, Bleh. it's just all one thing. I'm really liking where it's heading so far. I think the roof and the exterior of the house itself we can call done. So next, I would save our undulation and the, the exterior decorations till the very end, but I think would be a good time to start the inside. We could create a small loft right here, right at the edge of the fire pit, and it just adds more interest. It's another place you can hide stuff for your players. You can use, you know, floor pieces again. I like to use these little uh, plank pieces. There we go, and so right now I'm just laying down a basic idea. Okay, and then the ladder has got to come up here somewhere. I want to get, get up in here. Those are lined up about as good as I think I'm going to get them. We could do something like that. That's kind of fun. It's just one more neat little, you know, addition that I think would be fun to have. So I'm just going to drag it down and grab our door. So now, if we go back to our library, back to rural, 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 and we can grab some of these guys, these... Whoa, look at this. It clips through the, the roof, but it's right in between those, and it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to leave that sticking out there. Yeah, but uh, before you start, you know, decorating your house and filling it with stuff, make sure if you're going to have any functional areas like ladders, stairs, multiple levels, you knock that out first for sure. Okay, so our fire pit. Now, I made a, a big fire pit for the Great Hall build that uh, you guys may have seen on, on Tales Tavern. Uh, I'd like to do a similar type of build here, maybe a little bit calmer. So I'm going to use some of these castle ruin walls again to get a basic shape started. Now, it's even with the floor. We could pick it up and make it a little higher. It's a safety feature for the children in the longhouse. I mean, you don't want them tripping and falling in there right away. You gotta have some sort of lip on this thing. Cobblestones. Put these down in there like a stone bottom. Okay, so in the fire pit. Coal. I think that was under rocks. Yeah, right here. I, I don't know if this is coal or not. It's like a, a pile of black stones, sort of like obsidian. And we just go in here and fill them up. Shift them around and use them at different levels so that you get kind of a, a piled up look, if you will. There were some logs like piled up. I think it may have been under camping. Yes. Now, some of these are already lit with fire. I had used these and then I placed the fire individually. But since we're using a smaller fire pit, I think it would be cool to use these since we maybe only need one or two. Spin them around. And how about that? That looks cool. The other thing is if there's a combat encounter, you know, throwing someone over in there, you know, there could be a lot of fun things when you have. A step down. I am thinking about how to make this ladder look a little bit more natural. Maybe even just a stone section. One, to break up the, the colors along this wall. And two, draw interest to this area. Before we start decorating, though, is lighting. You're going to want to pick out your lights early. One, because it, it makes it easier to decorate because you know where your lights are already and you can build around them. And two, it adds light so that you can see better in here. So I really like these floor torches. Throw these bad boys up against the pillars. But what we could do is we could put one of these hanging lanterns here by the ladder. Yeah, there we go. There's no light actually in the animal pen, but somebody walks over here and checks on the animals. I love to set candles and hand torches and stuff as we're decorating, but the main sections of light I want to go ahead and, and establish. It's up here, and we can put it over on this side. You don't have to place all of your lights, but just get an idea of where your light sources are going to come from. And from our top-down perspective, things are looking pretty dope. Why don't you just want to cook a leg of mutton over that fire? All right, guys, so I think this is a great place to stop this video. I think the next video is where we're going to start decorating the inside, decorating the outside. This is exactly how I like to start the building process. Laying out your foundation, building from the ground up, trying to build an area that again has playability buildings that are interesting and fun to look at that have a lot of shapes a lot of color variation and avoid repetition and patterns so i want to thank you guys so much for watching today i raise a glass of ale for you if you're making it to the end of the video my god you guys are awesome make sure to leave me a comment let me know what you think let me know if you have any questions i'm gonna keep rocking with these videos man i've been having such a fun time making these and interacting with everyone and if this is your first time here, welcome. 
I would love to have you as a subscriber. Hit the button, hang out a little while. Make sure to like and share the video, guys. It would mean a lot to me. You can check the... Whoa. And as always, you can check the links in the description to the uh, official list of Nordic Forge Tailspire assets. And we also have a Discord. If you guys would like to join and talk to other cool people, share the stuff you're working on, we'd be happy to have you. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep being awesome. Keep building awesome things. And until we meet again, 